Thank you.
Hello. Hello, everyone. How's it going today? It is Monday, March 29th, 2021. I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs> I know I know that Mondays can be difficult. Mondays can be a little bit difficult, aren't they? But I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> We're going to be learning. We're going to be learning something very interesting today. Something very, very interesting. I'm, I'm going to turn over a little bit over here. <laughs> so we're going to be doing something very interesting when it comes to essay writing. Um, we are going to be doing something a little bit more academic this time. So last time we did some ESL uh, language. This time we're going to be doing some something a little bit more academic again. <laughs> uh, please let me know if the BGM is okay, if the background music is okay, if it's not too loud, not too quiet. <laughs> I think I think around this volume is okay. <laughs> good evening, good evening. Maybe good morning to some people or good afternoon to some people. <laughs> we'll be learning how to persuade people that Misato is the best wife. Well, we could, we could. <laughs> we can also persuade um we can also persuade people to see if there's other waifus who are uh just as good, just as good as Misato as well. <laughs> It's, it's perfect right now? Okay, it's it's perfect. Good. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember this this setting is perfect then. Okay, okay. Good, good, good. So, what is persuasive writing? What does it mean to be persuasive? So, we're going to be talking about persuasiveness. So, what do, what does everyone know? What What does it mean to be persuasive? What does that mean? Hmm... Hmm. <laughs> it's a it's a good Monday then. It's a good Monday with English class. With with Tane. Okay, that's good. That's good. So, what it means to be persuasive is that you are good at persuading someone to do or to believe something through reasoning. Or the use of temptation sometimes too. So it could be a, it could be also temptation. <laughs> so sometimes when people talk, you can have persuasive speech, but you could also have persuasive writing. So it's the yeah, it's the act of persuading people. <laughs> so this is what we're going to be doing. How to write persuasively. So this is what we're going to do. In this lesson, you will practice using persuasive writing. Um, let me see, maybe I can make this a little bit bigger. There we go, I think I think that's better. I think that's better so people can read it. Um, so when we use persuasive writing, you can use it in, it could be personal, it could be personal, it could also be for informal writing. You could use it for letters, but you can also use it for reviews as well. So it doesn't have to be just like essay writing. You could use this for when you're reviewing products maybe on like Amazon or maybe if you're buying products from your favorite website and you want to write reviews for it. This could also be for like uh, gaming, gaming things too. So like, I think a lot of people probably have Steam accounts on their computer for like playing games on the computer. You can write reviews for Steam. <laughs> so there's lots of different ways you can be persuasive with your writing. So. The goal in all forms of persuasive writing is to convince people to agree with you. You want to always be right, or you want to see, or you want to try to like convey to people if you have the best opinion about something, um, because you want to be right, and it feels it feels mighty good to be right. <laughs> so we need to start by thinking about how you want to win over your audience or the people that you want to basically persuade. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, sometimes what teachers like to do is they like to role play like kind of like a scenario. So here's something that we could do. We can do this in chat. We could do this all together. So um, <laughs> we don't have to have a partner necessarily, but we could pick a topic all together. We could do a topic. It could be something very, very simple. So this is kind of like to warm up our brains and get kind of like fresh, 
fresh, fresh ideas. So we're going to try to persuade people to agree with us. You can take one stance or you can try to take the other stance. It's fun to kind of like uh, play the opposite sometimes too. So what happens is that we can do a few scenarios. It's time to get a family pet. You can argue as the child or you can argue as the parent. Yes or no, is it appropriate to get a pet at this time? There's also another scenario we can do. I deserve the bigger bedroom in the, <laughs> in the house. And it could be an argument between siblings. And the other thing we can do is students should be allowed to use cell phones in the class. You can argue as a student or a teacher. So I was thinking, what scenario would everyone like to do? I'm going to just maybe like wait a moment, maybe for the chat. Would you like to do one? One, two, or three? Whoa, three. <laughs> so scenario three is the thing that needs to happen then? Hmm, that's interesting, okay. What scenario would everyone like to do? Oh, you say three, okay. So three then, okay, that's... That's two for three. Okay, well, if three is probably the most interesting, I think maybe a lot of people are students and I find that the argument for whether people should have cell phones in class is an interesting argument. So let's try to take maybe both stances. We can have a student stance and then we can also have the teacher stance as well. Um, maybe, hmm, I don't know what stance everyone would like to take in chat, but maybe I can try to argue the opposite and we can try to do that then. So the first thing that we would like to do is we need to brainstorm. We need to brainstorm. So, should students have cell phones oh maybe i should make this you know what i'll make this bigger for everyone did students have cell phones in class hmm that's what we need to that's what we need to do hmm so if you are the student you probably want to say yes 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 teacher i do want to have a cell phone in my class <laughs> in class um so let's think about this i am going to make uh hmm I like to actually use like a mind map, but because I can't write, I think I'm gonna try my best to do a table instead for our brainstorming. Uh, let's do two. So we're gonna have student argument, which will be yes. And maybe we'll do the teacher argument, which will be no. So we're gonna do like a few points then. This is just for like me to organize my ideas. Um. So, what are some reasons that students should have cell phones in the class? We need to be very persuasive. We need to convince our teacher. Teacher, please let me have my cell phone during class. I promise I won't play gotcha games. <laughs> so as a developer, I can make classes more engaging using apps. Oh, maybe that could be, that could be an interesting teacher argument. Maybe, um, maybe um, the teachers should be using modern uh, technology uh, to aid their lessons, maybe. Maybe that should be um, maybe a little bit more convincing that way. What are some other things that maybe students should say yes? I don't know. I'm, tr I'm trying to think of maybe like, maybe old boomer teachers like, old boomer teachers says, no, 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 you have to listen to me. No cell phones. So we're, we're, we're going to try to do the opposite too. <laughs> Mm, make emergency calls. Make an emergency call. Call when needed, or when, or maybe when, uh, when the need arises. Okay, that could be something you need it as a calculator. So maybe um, the cell phone has a calculator app. Oops, sorry. Calculator. There we go. As a calculator app. That could be something. Hmm, what are some other things? Students need a certain 
point to learn to deal with responsibility so they must allow to mm, that's true i feel like mm, i think it depends how old the student is too right um that always kind of comes into the argument what age is the student going to be responsible and being responsible mm, because I think maybe the argument would change maybe if it depends on what age. What age are we talking about? That could be something that um, that might sway some people's opinions too. Hmm. But I think that is a good point to bring up. Students need to learn responsibility. Maybe to like not like to not use it during class like when uh, not necessary. Well, when it's not a necessary time, I guess is what I'm trying to get, a, get at. <laughs> not to use the cell phone, um, maybe at inappropriate times. So, so like inappropriate time would be during class time, probably. So they need to like, yeah. So they can deal with the consequences if like they were doing something silly during class, right? Oh, that's interesting. So we had a class where the teacher said, look up the article and present your findings. So so the cell phone is necessary for the teacher's lesson sometimes too. Hmm. Hmm. Had to download math app on the phones like it was like a fun activity. So that's the thing too. Maybe like it could be for like down downtime fun educational um, activities. That could be something. So maybe when you're done your classwork, you can do like maybe math problems or maybe something else on your cell phone that is like school related or educational related. So the teachers don't get upset at you. <laughs> they can use the cell phones to answer questions too. Yes, there are actually apps that teachers use. I, I use it myself. There is an app called Kahoot. Um, oh, oopsie. Um, Using an app to answer oops, the teacher's questions. If this goes back to the first point here, I would say. Um, there are apps called like Kahoot. Like, it's like fun quizzes that way. <laughs> as long as they don't bother or disrupt the class, students aren't hurting anyone. Yeah, that's true. They're not hurting anybody but themselves. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's true. Uh, I, I feel like it does go back into like the responsibility point. It's like you could kind of like build off of that. Like if the student is using the cell phone during class, it's only harming their own education. But I feel like if it was a younger student, it's like you have to be that adult to kind of like show them like, hey, you no, 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 no. <laughs> so I think it, I think it does kind of go back on like maybe the age as well depending how responsible a student will be. Hmm. So, let's see here. What are some boomer boomer teacher arguments that if a teacher wa was to say no? Hmm. How would a teacher argue against this? Hmm. Well, if if this was a boomer teacher, if this was probably a boomer teacher, they would be like, "Well, traditional me traditional um methods are better for i don't know i'm trying to think of something they would probably say <laughs> traditional methods are better or i don't know hmm. let's see here they would probably say like hey you gotta learn like maybe like learn to pay attention or something like maybe they would say something silly like that learn to pay attention um uh, some people may agree with this and some people don't, but it's kind of like you have to learn to be bored sometimes. I heard some people say that. It's like you <laughs> it's like you have to learn to pay attention, but you also have to learn to be uh, bored or you have to kind of like focus. It's like learning, yeah. <laughs> learn to pay attention or focus. <laughs> hmm. I've usually heard like a lot of older people say that though. <laughs> and 
any time on your phone is not the time. Yeah, that's what they would probably say. Any time that's on your cell phone is not time for like it, like with me or like that kind of thing. <laughs> as, as if people can't multitask. Mm, that's actually probably a positive point. Multitasking. Some people can do it, some people can't, but it all depends. Some people are able to multitask. <laughs> School is a place of education. It is, it is. They would they would probably say something like that. School is a place of education. Pay attention in school. You can do your fun time after school. <laughs> oh, maybe catching catching someone doing something naughty on their cell phone. Mm, that would be pretty bad. I think that'd be extra embarrassing for the student though. <laughs> That'd be that'd be extra embarrassing for the student. Don't don't do that. Um, hmm. I don't know if uh, I don't know if teachers do this anymore, but it's like usually when people write notes in class or if you draw things in class, usually sometimes they will they will take it away from you and they will uh, read it out for the whole class. <laughs> hmm. Let's see here. What would be some other boomer things? Um. Maybe they would say, maybe for like the traditional methods, they would say like writing is better instead of typing or something. But I don't know if all teachers would. I think I think usually most good teachers would embrace modern things. So I don't know if they would say that like you would want to. They would force people to write more though. Hmm. It's sometimes hard to have the opposite convincing argument when I feel like my my bias my bias lies lies towards the yes. <laughs> it's hard. It's 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 quite difficult to think of no. Hmm. I think yeah, it could depend on the class. Yeah, de uh, depend depends on the class and um depends on the class. I feel like uh, hmm. You don't need your phone to learn. <laughs> you don't need your phone to learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Writing will make you remember that. That's actually true. There's um, I think that argument's quite convincing. Writing will make you remember more, um, rather than taking a photo or, hmm. Maybe just taking a photo. I feel like I'm able to remember things if I type them. Sometimes. Um, hmm. Writing things down actually does make you remember things more. Hmm. Would, uh, if we have to look up important... Ah, you know what? That would probably be interesting. I think maybe some teachers might say, um, looking up important, uh, let's see. Important information on maybe not on the computer, but they would probably say looking up important information in the school's library because usually sometimes they will get you to do that. They will say, Hey, we're going to have a library day and we're going to show you how to like look up important information in the school's library rather than computer sessions. Sometimes they'll they'll do that. So they're going to show you how to look up things maybe at your college or university kind of uh, libraries. Hmm. Making kids write on like, oh, like on the chalkboard. I don't, I don't know if they make them do that anymore. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know if uh, teachers make kids write things on the chalkboard anymore for um, re repeated lines. Uh, I think I'll maybe just like a a small tangent about that when I was younger my teachers would make us write definitions down in the dictionary uh, and they wouldn't let us go outside during recess if uh, we were doing something bad hmm <laughs> the phone has an increase of probability oh maybe for cheating ah you know what I never considered that there's always like in the back of my mind I always like to think people don't cheat <laughs> Um, the phone has the possibility, oops, possibility that someone may cheat. So that could be interesting. Hmm. Okay, so we have like, we have some, um, 
convincing arguments. We have some convincing arguments for yes, and we also have some teacher arguments for no. Should students have cell phones in class? So, this is kind of like the thing that you have to think about for persuasive writing. You have to think about yes, you have to think about what they're going to bring up for the opposite side too. So you have to make your argument sound convincing. You could bring up, hmm, teachers probably think that traditional methods are better when actually teachers should be embracing modern technology. So you can kind of like take the negative and then you can turn it into like what you're going to argue, if that makes sense. So we can try to like do it that way. Um, maybe some older teachers might say that it's better to pay attention and focus, but there are benefits of having a cell phone such as having a calculator app, learning to take on your own responsibility as a person. So I think, maybe I should, <laughs> I think I should probably write this down. So uh, it depends how you would want to write it with your sources as we did, if, as we did last time, but um, you can, depending on what kind of references you have, older teachers may suggest that um, um, traditional, let me see here, how do, how do we word this? Traditional methods are better when actually, and then you could even use this as a reference if, if you do find something credi credible, <laughs> make sure you find credible sources too. This is just my own personal bias is uh, what I'm saying. When actually, teachers should be embracing uh, mo modern technology uh, to teach their lessons. This way, it can be more engaging. Wait, oh, be more engaging. Uh, and something else, something else on top of that. It could, it could be more engaging or I could, hmm. I mean, maybe look, look at this. Look what you're, look what you're watching right now. You're learning, you're learning things from a succubus VTuber girl. <laughs> if that's not engaging, then I don't know what is. So we have, we have our yes, we have our no. So let's think about the next thing. I think I would like to show you a little bit of vocabulary as well. <laughs> Let's look at some of vocabulary. Oops. I think I might have to make this. This is also another like little warm up here. Um, I do like to give some people vocabulary brush ups as well. Um, I will give you a few minutes for this. There are some things that we will go over. Um, I will also talk about more transitional words and things that you can put in between your essays because I personally find that that is the most difficult part when it comes to essay writing. Thinking about how to rephrase some things or try to phrase things in different ways. When you're trying to say almost the same convincing argument over and over and over again and it's really, really difficult to say it again and again and again. <laughs> So let's see here. We have win over. Pull at one's heartstrings. Oh, you're pulling at my heartstrings. You have stance, credibility, first person, third person, essentials, neutral, anticipate, contradict, precise, and confidence. So here are the definitions as well. Match these words to the correct definition. I will give you a little bit of time and I will show you the correct answers because this is what we will be talking about.
You don't have you don't have to know all the things about what a what a lady does uh, outside her job. <laughs> you don't you don't have to learn about uh, what may be wholesome or unwholesome things uh, she she tends to do outside of uh, the workplace. <laughs> Ooh, as I give you some time to work on this, though, um, Miss B and I will be having a teacher talk for Miss B's office hours on Friday, so I'm really excited about that. It's going to be at 11 a.m. West Coast time for Miss B's time, and it's going to be 2 o'clock my time on Friday. So that's going to be really exciting. We're going to have, like, a teacher talk. <laughs> It is true. I feel like, um, I, I did introduce it. I did introduce it during uh, the debut time. Miss, Miss Tane likes to drink a little bit on the weekends. <laughs> it's, it's fun every once in a while. <laughs> okay, I think, uh... Perhaps everyone might be ready? Let me know. Yeah, let me know. Yes or no. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's only tea. It's only tea in this teapot. I would never, never, ever bring that kind of drink inside of the classroom. No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, let's let's go on then. I feel like this is good to kind of like warm everyone up this way. Okay, let's take let's take this away. And doo -doo 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 -doo. I have the answers for everyone right here. Oh, I think I might have to cut cut off this portion a little bit here. Oh no. Oh no, it did the thing again. There we go. <laughs> okay, so we have win over. Win over is B. Win over is B to persuade or convince somebody to agree with you or support you. That is B. Oh, don't worry. There's nothing compromising on my desktop. I have minimal anime wallpapers just scrolling by. <laughs> Minimalist anime wallpapers. Um, so the next part is, so number one is B. Uh, number two, pull at one's heartstrings. That is D. So D is to cause someone to feel a strong emotion. Oh, you're pulling at my heartstrings. You're making me feel emotional. Um, three, stance is F. So a position or an attitude about an issue or a topic. So, mm, it's good to have, you have to know your stance when you're going to be persuasive. You need to know what side of the argument that you're going to try to convince people for. So, the next one is credibility. Credibility is I. So the quality of being believable. You have to have credible sources, but you have to feel that you're going to be credible as well. Five is first person. So a narrative or style from one's personal perspective. So this is something that teachers might allow you to do for essays or they might not allow you to do for essays. When you talk, when you talk about yourself, I or me, you're talking about your own opinion, or you're using the word I or me, or first person. Six is third person, that is J, an indirect narrative or style, so you are going to use the words he, she, or it. So that is third person. Seven is E, so the most important parts, essential, essential is important parts. <laughs> So, the next one is eight. Neutral. Neutral is C. Not on the side or the other of an argument. Oh, sorry. Not on one side or the other of an argument. Some people like to remain neutral. If some people are getting very, very heated, 
you want to also remain neutral if you don't want to go for one side or the other side. Um, let's see here. The next one we have is anticipate number nine. H, to expect that something is going to happen. Hmm. Anticipate. Oh, I'm really, I'm feeling much anticipation. Anticipating something. Hmm. Something exciting, perhaps. <laughs> So the next one is 10. Contradict, which is L, to deny or to disagree. Contradict. So the next one is 11. Precise. It is G. Exact. Precise is exact. Number 12 is confidence. Have confidence. <laughs> uh, to expect that something is going to happen. But you could be, yes, you could also be confident in yourself, but you could also have confidence. Yeah, something is going to happen. Mm -mm. Something is going to happen. Okay, so that is the vocabulary that I have for you. You could take a screenshot. <laughs> exactly. Have confidence. No confidence. <laughs> so... You could take a screenshot if you would like to look at the vocabulary and look at the answers here. Okay. You could also take a look at the VOD if you want to go back as well. And I think that's so convenient for YouTube. We could always go back to the VODs. So. There's a few things we need to think about when it comes to persuasive language as well. I am going to give you the tools that you need. Techniques. So winning over your audience. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, identified three persuasive techniques. All of these can be in your persuasive writing. So we need to have logic, we need to have emotional appeal, and we need to have credibility. So that's pretty important. So we need to provide facts that are true, and we need to use real life examples and use reasoning. So that is the logic. You always have to make sure that you have credible sources as well, which I have done in a previous video on Spirit University. We need to have emotional appeal. So convince the reader to have an emotional response. Often used in advertising, pull on the reader's heartstrings and use descriptive detail. You want to make people have a reaction to what you're saying. Sometimes things could be rather controversial. So you want you almost want to use a little bit of that. Sometimes people can notice when you're trying to do an emotional appeal, but you need to still have the logic that comes with it. And the most important thing, credibility. Convince the readers of one's authority on the subject. Establish respect with the audience and use strong language. Keep the argument simple and to the point. So, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to be mm, concise. It can be difficult to be concise, but <laughs> let's, let's be honest sometimes, there are lazy readers out there too. You want to make sure that uh, the lazy readers get the gist of what you're talking about. There's lots of people who love to read, but there's also people who want to be like, oh, get to the point, what's your point, kind of, kind of thing. So it's, it's good to try to be concise and try to show the best of your argument. It could be simple and to the point. Yes, yes. <laughs> so language. So below is some persuasive language that you can use to win over your audience and strengthen your argument. <laughs> exactly. Uh, too long. Don't read. Didn't read. <laughs> Here are some things that we can do. Use reasoning. As you know, obviously, it is certain, of course, without a doubt. You can use examples. This one is good. I like to use this one a lot. For instance, you could even just say, for example, in your essay, to illustrate. Illustrate is like you're trying to paint a picture for somebody, visualize it in their head. As evidence, in fact, these are good for when you have to bring up your examples. This is good uh, if you want to use this even before you use your quotations. 
or even you can use this in your quotations, which I went over during the last video as well. Uh, you can use the emotions. Imagine if, just think. It's inhumane, senseless too, not too. How would you feel if put yourself in this person's or someone's shoes? So this one can be a little bit, mm, it depends. I think this one you would need to ask your professor or you need to ask your teachers about this. Sometimes they will let you write things in first person or third person. So what that means is you need to see what kind of style the teacher will like when you hand in the paper. I've, I've always asked my teachers, do you want this in, can I write in first person? Personally, I think first person is easier to write in instead of third person. Uh, it depends. It depends on what you're trying to convey. It depends on what kind of style, how formal to what extent informal the teacher would like as well. So if we're trying to use emotions, just try to keep that in mind. Um, the next one we have is <clears throat> organization. Oh, I'm going to have some water. <clears throat> use organization to begin with. Moreover, Yet another reason why, in the same way, one last reason. So, you can organize things. Try to think about how your essay is going to be lined out. What do you think are the most important points, and which points do you think are maybe, hmm, maybe not the least important points, but try to think about the ones that you really, really want to try to hit home with. And then, you can use the authority. From experience, hmm, this person says, this is what I like to use a lot. If you find somebody with a really, really credible source, this is what the person says. Because maybe if you are a student, you don't have your own authority. You can't just say something and someone's going to believe you. You have to say this person says this. This person explains it like this, or this person confirms this. It could be somebody in the academic field. <laughs> so you have to try to rely on other people's authority this way, but make sure that they are credible authority. It always comes back. It always comes back to credibility. You don't want to credit somebody who doesn't have authority. Five years. Something has taught me. I would say this one, it has a little bit more an, an, uh, anecdotalness to it. Um, you don't really want to rely too much of, of your own experiences, but if you do talk about your own experiences, you have to, you have to also include people that have similar experiences to you. So you can't just rely on your own experience. Academia, the original clout game. <laughs> yes. Okay, if we want if we want to phrase it like that, try to rely on the academic clout of other people. <laughs> you you don't okay, here. This is this is something very important. You you as a student, you do not have your own clout. You have to rely on the clout of the academic people. Does that make sense? You don't have your own clout yet, but you will soon have your own clout in academia. <laughs> According to this person. So, you will you will build up your clout. You will build up your clout eventually. <laughs> but you have to rely on other people's clout first. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Good job. Let's see here. So below are some examples for persuasive languages, then. <laughs> so, as you know, the flu affects young and the elderly more than the middle age. Imagine if your child got sick during the holidays and missed all the parties and fun. Just think, if only five minutes to get a flu shot, but up to five weeks to get over the flu, 
Hmm, so this is an interesting stance that this person is taking. It is certain that flu shots are safer than getting the flu. Without a doubt, all the health professionals should have an annual flu shot. Ten years working in a nursing home taught me about the importance of getting a flu shot. So they kind of like put everything all together here. This shows their own experience. Ten years of working in this place has taught has taught this person about this. So they kind of bring everything all together. There's a little bit of logic, there's a little bit of emotional appeal, and the credibility in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking what we can do. Would you like to try to make a convincing argument about a waifu? I think that could be rather interesting. Maybe we can try to make a convincing argument about... Hmm. It could be a waifu. It could be maybe a certain anime series as well. I've heard that there's kind of a little bit of a controversy right now with um, Promise Neverland, but I have not seen both endings of the manga and the anime because I'm I'm a little bit behind. But some people are making an argument about which ending is better, the manga or the anime. So there's there's things that people can argue about that. <laughs> Here's a little bit of uh, something extra here when it comes to credibility. So to establish authority, write with confidence and use precise verbs and nouns to say exactly what you mean. This one is rather interesting because when it comes to essays, you should always write in the present tense. This person says, this person explains. You don't want to use the past tense when it comes to essays most of the time. You want to be convincing and always write in the present tense. Whenever one word can be replaced by a few words, Use it. Be concise. And avoid some words like possibly, usually, likely, probably, could, may, ought to, seem to, and might. I feel like these one these adverbs make your convin like it, it does it's not really as convincing this way. These yeah, so it, actually that's funny how it just says that. It just it weakens your argument. <laughs> Kind of funny how I, I just said that. It, it, if you use adverbs like these, it weakens your argument because you don't want to be probably sure, you want to be very sure. You want to convince this person what you're thinking. And always proofread and uh, spell check your work. Always make sure that um, you have a fresh pair of eyes. Sometimes it's best to get a friend to proofread something, but if you need to sleep, uh, I feel like it's kind of the same when it comes to art as well. When it comes to art and writing something, sleep on it and come back with fresh eyes the next day. You will might notice some things and mistakes. Plus, this is something that has helped me when it comes to writing. Read your essay out loud. Don't just read it in your head. Don't read it in your head. Read it out loud to yourself because you're going to notice probably grammatical mistakes. <laughs> so it's good to write it, but also try to read it out loud. See if it makes sense that way. Hmm, you want to talk about Homura? <laughs> Should we talk about how Homura did nothing wrong in Madoka Magica, the third movie? <laughs> that could be it. That could be a compelling argument. Make friends in distant time zones so they can proofread your papers while you sleep. That that is a really good idea. I never thought about something like that. See, everybody has wonderful ideas in chat as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you will have more confidence, use more confidence with your words. So don't use words like probably or might, that kind of things. It makes your argument very weak that way. <laughs> That's really cool. I never thought about that. Make friends with people in different time zones and they can read over your work if, uh, if they're nice enough to. <laughs> mm. This one could be interesting too. Sometimes, um... Some teachers will allow this, some teachers might not, but you could use rhetorical questions too. Um, mostly my professors have not really liked this, but sometimes some teachers do. You can use a rhetorical question to kind of like start out your essay. Um, a rhetorical question is a question that does not need to be answered. It's obvious. Um, it's an obvious answer to emphasize a point. It gets your readers to think. 
you can use a rhetorical question in the body piece of a writing too. So these are some examples that this is right here. Um, how much does your doctor earn for your visit? Or were you born to work 24 seven? Will the sky always be blue? Do you treat your pet like your best friend? This one, this one kind of speaks to me. Were you born to work 24 seven? No, no, that's my emotional appeal. People were not meant to work 24 seven. <laughs> so this could be kind of like your emotional response you want to get out of people too. Oh, do we want to talk about characters that did nothing wrong? That could be a, <laughs> we can do that. Okay, let's think about this. Let's uh, let's bring this back. Characters that did nothing wrong. Characters that did nothing wrong. We have Homura from Madoka Magica. We have Dio from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> um, who else? Oh, Griffith. Griffith. Yeah, yeah. So we have um, also. Griffith from Berserk. <laughs> How would we try to convince people that these characters did nothing wrong? <laughs> I think this would be extremely difficult to do. This would be very, very difficult to do. You know what? Okay, I'm, um... I actually did think of a more controversial topic, but I don't know if I should write this on this YouTube channel, though. I was thinking of a specific doujin tag that- a specific doujin tag that people actually like to argue about. Hmm. But, this topic is something people do talk about on YouTube, though. Hmm. Hmm. Am I allowed to talk about this? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Or if I can try to word it in a very specific way. Uh, you know what? I think I'm actually going to try to avoid it. Um, I was thinking of a specific doujin tag that people like to argue about. Which is... You can probably try to find videos on, on about this on YouTube. But it's the, it's the, uh, it's the NTR tag. <laughs> it's the NTR tag that is uh, a very, very common tag that's in Dojin. But we don't, we don't have to. Uh... Lots of people like to argue about that one. Whether people like it or they don't, but it's more so a uh, personal taste, I'd say, for when people like to talk about it. <laughs> some people like it, some people uh, don't, and they're very expressive about why they don't like it for um, obvious reasons. Let's see here. How would we convince people that these characters did nothing wrong? So, this is actually something that I've brought up before in my... Hmm, I don't think I brought it up before for Spirit University, but I think I've talked about this on my Twitch channel. I've talked about villains. Why do people... Oops, sorry. Why do people like villains? Why do they not like, or why do they not like villains? Do we consider Homura maybe a villain in Madoka? I'm not too sure. This is something, um, hmm. How could I phrase this? Villains. Villains will choose you over the world. Hmm. Let me see here. Let's even think about My Hero Academia. Hero, if you we're in a relationship with a hero. Heroes will choose you second over the world, but villains will choose you over the world. Hmm. Does that make sense? <laughs> Heroes will save the world and you will come second. But, I think this is rather romantic. Villains will choose you and destroy the world. Maybe, and destroy it. Don't you think that's a little bit romantic, though? <laughs> I think this relates to Madoka and Homura. 
Omra chose to save Madoka, or chose, sorry, not, not to save Madoka, but, uh, sorry everyone if you have not seen Madoka, but Madoka has been around since, uh, let me see here, when did, when did it air? 2011. It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. Go go watch it. Go watch the movies. <laughs> so if we're going to talk about maybe Homura, heroes will choose you second over the world. Heroes will save the world and you will come second. But villains will choose you over the world and possibly destroy the world. So when it comes to Homura, Homura chose... Madoka, hmm, for her own selfish reasons. But I think that's just romantic. Instead of like saving the world though. Um hmm. Homura had to time travel. I think it was over, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was over 100 times. Over 100 times to save Madoka from her fate. Hmm. I feel that if you had to put in a lot of personal turmoil hmm, for that journey, you would probably want to achieve your own goals and you probably wouldn't care about the, what the world thinks, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but I don't know if that's a good enough reason though. But maybe I think that since Homura loved Madoka so much, that's just really romantic. But that's just a personal, that's just a personal opinion of mine, I suppose. <laughs> How can I make that more convincing? It's a little bit difficult to. It's a little bit difficult to make this sound convincing because it's a very controversial standpoint, I'd say. Omra had to endure lots of um, personal hmm, turmoil to try to save her best friend. To the point that she made her own universe to try to protect Madoka. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> this is just uh, something a little bit interesting. Just, just a little bit of something. Let's see here. Does anybody want to make good points about Dio or Griffith, though? How can we try to make Dio or Griffith sound um, compelling? <laughs> Do I like Yandres? I think they're rather interesting as characters. I think it's nice to see characters that are a little bit maybe more on the eccentric side sometimes. Because usually when it comes to heroes, we know that they're going to, uh, usually when it comes to heroes, we know that the heroes are going to triumph in the end. We know that good is going to win over evil. Oh, sorry, sorry, I did not, I did not see this. Are you content with your mor moral <laughs> coil of flesh and blood? Have you never thought what would, uh, it be, uh, to be more? It's the only part of nature to see Kyra. Ah, interesting. It is only natural of human nature to seek higher and better. Mm. So would you say that could be for Dio and for Griffith, perhaps? Griffith is just a boy boss building his empire. <laughs> they, they only say he was wrong because they hate to see him win. <laughs> I guess in, in all fairness too, Griffith did some pretty bad- he did some pretty bad things to get to where he, uh, where he wanted to be. Um, let's see, let's- how about- yeah, let's- let's try to- let's try to make Dio sound good. 
So let's go. Hmm. I like that there's like a rhetorical question there too. Are you content with the mor mortal coil of flesh and blood? Have you never thought what would it be to be more? Hmm. Although Dio did kick Jonathan's dog and that I do not support. I like Dio as a character, but there is a big problem in JoJo about um, animal, uh, animal things that happen in JoJo. It's always, there's always one or two things that happen to animals in JoJo. <laughs> it's hard to make Dio sound good. <laughs> He's just a cool character. <laughs> Dio, um... <sighs> he always wanted to be better than Jonathan, right? He just, he just wanted to see Jonathan suffer. Hmm. Okay, well, here, let's, let's see here. Do you... Hmm. How can we do our best here? Hmm. We can take what we can take what uh, Maldito said though. I feel like that's kind of like a good rhetorical question to kind of start off though. Are you con or I guess it, maybe it's a little bit more personal, but um, are you content with um, your mortal oil of flesh and blood? Oh, have you never? thought what would um, it it be to be more mm, Dio's childhood he did grow up with um, that that bad man right what was it the person that stole what was it stole the stuff from the Joestar family it is only natural um, of human nature to seek higher and better. Maybe uh, to to seek a higher and better position, or to seek higher and better in general. Mm hmm. The Joe Star family ring. Yes, yes, yes. I guess we want to be a little bit more specific for higher and better. Um, to seek. In the world. Mm. <laughs> In the world. <laughs> the, the world. Oh, okay. Um, Dio always wanted to be. Um, well, I guess we would say Dio always wants to be better than the the Joe Star fan. Um, maybe even just like we can target Jonathan. <laughs> we can we can kind of try to make it sound like it's like a human nature thing to always want bigger and better things. Hmm. We would have to try to find something credible about that. Humans always want better and like, um, bigger and better things all the time. Sometimes, sometimes there's a lot of people who, who like to stay humble and are very thankful for their positions. But in Dio's case, oh, that's actually, okay. Many people, um, like, um, maybe many people are content with, uh, their, um, maybe current, uh, positions in life, but in Dio's case, he always, he always wanted more. Or I guess it would be he always wants more. Wants, wants, he always wants more. <laughs> um, he rejected, he rejected, he rejects his human or to become the ultimate 
vampire. <laughs> it's it's self improvement. Yes, it, yes, it's self improvement. <laughs> Oh, do you didn't have? Oh, oh, that is interesting. How you bring that up? Hmm, it's interesting how you bring that up because I find that when it comes to okay, this is kind of the opposite of what I want to talk about. This is we're talking about essay writing, but there's also critical theory classes where you analyze people's essays. Um. If we were to analyze Dio's case, it could almost be, it could come from a Freudian perspective if we wanted to, because um, Dio did not have a mother. If we wanted to analyze something in a Freudian perspective, maybe because Dio didn't have a mother, um, it leads him to, I don't know, certain stereotypical things that people think about if I don't know if they don't have um, the maternal side of support. I don't know. <laughs> so there's uh, there's different ways that people can think about essay writing in a critical th um, kind of perspective as well. You're trying to paint him as a victim of his circumstances. Yeah, that could be. Mm hmm. That could be another reason. It's interesting how we would want to spin the story in a way, right? How we want to convince someone. I find that the best way to to do stuff when it comes to essays is you're trying to explain to someone if they don't know anything about the source material. <laughs> Poorly analyzing Dio. <laughs> As a rad femme character. <laughs> Oh yes, he's going. He's willing to sacrifice the approval of men to become a hot vampire. True, true. Dio, get it, get it, Dio. Become a hot vampire. <laughs> oh, there's so there's a lot of interesting ways how you can make your arguments sound compelling. <laughs> um, we did we did an anime perspective. We talked about Homura. We talked about Dio. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, did I? I know it's no, I spelled ultimate right. Here, let's make that a little bit. There we go. <laughs> the key lesson: reject humanity, become a hot vampire. I feel I feel like that's kind of like the thing when it, okay there's a trend here Homura has suffering so she becomes the ultimate witch or like the ultimate um magical girl witch thing um Dio rejects humanity becomes hot vampire Griffith rejects um what was it humanity becomes hot villain birdman thing monster <laughs> Become, become villain. Reject humanity. This is this is the lesson now. Reject humanity. Become hot villain. <laughs> there we go. That's uh that's the point of the lesson now. Um, the reason I brought up, the reason I brought up the villain versus hero situation is because people usually don't like to defend don't like to defend villain characters. <laughs> um, and it's- and it's- and it's hard to defend villain characters. Um, but I feel like this is one of my romantic reasons for liking villains. Heroes can sometimes be boring characters because you know that they're gonna win. You know that, like, hero plots, you know that they're gonna save the world. I guess this comes a little bit more towards like the characterization of essay writing, but um, hmm. villains will mostly pick you first. Whether you are maybe like their their rival, maybe if they're you're the rival, they're gonna focus on you. Or if you're the love interest, they will focus on you, and then they will destroy the world. <laughs> but the heroes will always think about you second. The heroes will always think about the world first. 
and I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, what did we learn about today? We learned about how to write persuasively, and we got a little bit of Mimi, Mimi at the end too. <laughs> that's the thing, if you reject humanity, and you become hot villain, then... I don't know, you can just kind of do your own thing and have your own little musical number, I, I suppose. You can have your own little fun time. <laughs> That's true. That's true, usually in Dojin, the heroes don't win. I... I like alternate, um... I like alternate plots, usually when things don't get too tropey. What did we learn about today? We learned about how to write persuasively. Um, if you want to learn how to do persuasive things, you could also, here, have a checklist for yourself too. Have a checklist. Here is a checklist. If you would like to take a screenshot of it, I will leave it up. Before you start writing your persuasive piece, I think brainstorming is definitely the way to go. You want to think about your stance. You want to think about your stance. So. Did I hook my reader? Did I identify a topic? Did I identify my stance on an issue or a topic? Did I stick with the narrative? <laughs> Did I stick with the narrative um, or the viewpoint? Did I provide compelling evidence? Did I support my argument with examples that will appeal to the reader's emotions and rationality? Did I use concise, persuasive language? Some of the stuff that we listed earlier. Um, did I conclude in a convincing way? Did I cut out all the weak words? So cut out those weak words, cut them out. Cut out usually, cut out may, cut out could, usually, uh, may, could, um, those ones that make your, the adverbs that make your sound, your argument sound weak. And did I proofread my work? <laughs> so we had our, we, what we did today is we had our warm up. We talked about the vocabulary, and we also talked about you have to have a logical essay, you need to appeal to the emotional area of the reader, and you need, yeah, you need to pull at their heartstrings, and you need to have credible sources. So, we talked about the language you can have as well. You could take a screenshot um, earlier when the VOD is up, and we talked about this one example for this person showing examples of blue shots and their perspective for how people should have them. Okay. Talked about a lot of things today. So what is the lesson? <laughs> what is the lesson? Um, we also talked about villain characters, Homura, Dio, Griffith, and how can we make them sound good and convincing <laughs> or appealing as characters? <laughs> um, mm, the virgin adverb and the Chad <laughs> declarative. There we go. It's good to think about things in memes that way, isn't it? It's good, it's good. <laughs> Become hot. Become a hot villain. And you'll be, you'll be forgiven in the eyes of, the, of most readers, probably. <laughs> um, let's see. Is it a fact that everyone is fond of dogs? Um, imagine uh, what would have happened to you, how much you'd have to suffer for you to- Oh no! No, poor Jonathan's dog! No! Danny! Danny! <laughs> I, I weep for all the animals in JoJo. All the animals in JoJo. Rip. <laughs> um, so, we talked about persuasive language. 
Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> if anybody has any questions, let me know. Sag, rip, as happy BGM plays. <laughs> you love the checklist? Okay, that's good. How do I become hot vampire boy? Um... Hmm... Remember there was like that website forum, I think it was called like called Vampire there was a there was an old vampire forum called I think it was Vampire Freaks or something that I remember <laughs> several years ago. That was like one of the websites people would go to talk about vampire stuff. <laughs> How do you become a hot vampire? You find the stone mask. You find the stone mask and yep, there you go, you reject humanity and, th and but then you can't return you can't return to monkey. Succubus summoning ritual. Oh, you would have to be careful about that. If you try to do a succubus summoning ritual, you I don't know, I might I, I might appear outside of the classroom. So you would have to be you would have to be careful about that. Reject humanity. Jojo. Just reject humanity and everything's gonna be deja vu. You learned a lot then? Okay, that's good. I feel like as long as you learn, as long as we're memeing it up at the same time, then it's all good. You keep summoning Succubi to proofread your midterm paper that they- <laughs> Oh no! I think uh, the succu the succubi may have other intentions instead of um, helping with homework. Let's just say. <laughs> Goodbye, Jojo. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions? Well, if there are no questions, or if you think about something, uh, I will be at Miss B's office hours, 11 a.m. EST time on the West Coast, and it will be at two o'clock on my time for EST. Uh, Miss B and I will be talking about like lots of stuff. I don't know. We're just going to be like chatting. If anybody wants to ask like any questions, maybe English or math questions, or we could just be like chilling, talking about anime, food, whichever. <laughs> so I I'm going to see everyone again on Friday. So you get you get me three times. You get me three times this week. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing everybody again. I hope you had fun. I hope you had a fun time. Um, I know Mondays are hard, but it's okay. We got, we're going to get through it. It's a, it's a fun week. It's a really fun week. Um, on Sunday, we will play some more uh, children's games. I think I would like to play maybe Fatty Bear or Buggy, but I do want to play some more of the Pajama Sam games and Spy Fox. Those were really interesting. So I think we'll play either Buggy or maybe we will play Fatty Bear. Oh, sorry, not, not Buggy, Buzzy. I think his name is Buzzy. <laughs> so we'll play some more nostalgic children's games on Sunday as well. So I hope that you enjoyed the lesson. The next lesson will be on ESL topics as well. So it will be a little bit of a slower one. <laughs> oh, you're already past Monday. Oh, congrats. Living in the future is great, isn't it? <laughs> I know, that poor, poor little babby didn't get milk for their cereal. If you are interested in seeing the, the game we played yesterday, you can check out the VOD as well. <laughs> so, 
I hope that everyone enjoyed. Um, if you found anything interesting from any of the lessons, it could be my lessons, it could be Miss B's lessons, or it could be Aki's lessons and Dr. Mo's lessons. Uh, be sure to be sure to clip things. Um, if you want to take any screenshots, post them on our Twitter or our Reddit. We're having a fun time with this. We're having a fun time with this uh, Spirit University project. <laughs> So I will see everyone on Friday and I will see everyone on Sunday. So this is this is your teacher, Tane, signing out. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful evening. Wonderful morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.